Welcome everybody. I'm Khumet Zahran Pekile and this is C++ Code Solutions. And today we are going to be working on a very, very exciting problem. Remember that you can also send in your problem questions on our email address, gg.ndehalang.gmail.com, where we attend all your programming questions, queries. Okay, so this is the problem that you're going to be working on today. It's quite exciting. A high school class has a thousand students and a thousand lockers, one for each student. On the very first day of school, the principal plays the following game. She asks that the first student to go and open all the lockers, and then she asks the second student to go and close all the lockers, which are even numbered. The third student is asked to check every third locker. If it is open, the student closes it, and if it is open, the student closes it. Fourth student is asked to check every fourth locker. And if it is open, the student closes it. If it is closed, the student opens it. The remaining student continues this game. In general, the nth student checks every nth locker. If the locker is open, the student closes it. And if it is closed, the student opens it. After all the students have taken their turn, some of the lockers are open and some are closed. Write a program that prompts the user to enter the number of the lockers in a school. After the game is over, the program outputs the number of the lockers that are opened. And we have a test runs here, and we are also tasked to check to see if there's any developing pattern. It's exciting, right? What they mean here is that the first student will be coming in to say, let's open up all the lockers we have. And the second student will be coming in to say, suppose you have five lockers. We'll be coming into all the even numbers lockers. We're going to two, the fourth, the sixth, and so on. Now, the third student will only be going after them the multiples of three lockers, meaning they'll be going to locker three, locker six, locker nine, until the last. And the fourth student also the same way. Hence, it says the nth student will be going to the nth number lockers. See, simple quite enough, right? How do we keep a track of these lockers? Because there's a constant need in this problem to continuously keep checking the state of the locker. Is it open or is it closed? What we will use for the purpose of our code is arrays. Arrays enable us to constantly check what number is stored in this position and what number is stored in that position. So now, which means that we will identify open and closed with in a specific way. We will say for opened, we will identify it by a one because you know that a one is saying it's on in binary. And for close, we will say it's a zero, right? Okay, I'm just commenting this out. So what we will initially do is then we will say this is our array, and then our array has all its elements closed. That's what we will initially do, and then we'll keep changing and updating them as the game goes. Fair and simple enough, right? Right? Okay, so first things first, let's declare our array. There we have declared our array. Our array called the locker, and then this is the size of the array. If we've got five lockers, that will be the size. But then now, this, the, the user is the one that's supposed to enter the number of the lockers. That's what the question I just said. So let's prompt the user to enter that. Right, there we have it. The size which will now be passed on to here to say no we've got 10 lockers okay so now as we've already been explaining that first things first is we will say all the elements in our array are at a zero we initializing this array to say they are all closed right so that the game will now begin okay now let me write the code for this and then i'll explain
Okay, so over here what we did, we've closed all the lockers. What we said is from locker, the first one until the last one, let's keep them, let's have all these elements at a zero. Simple enough, right? Right. So now, moving on, what does the question say? The first student opens all the lockers. Now let's go for that. And that one will be simple. It's just the same, taking this and saying, now this was closing all the lockers, but now we'll just be opening them. Let's just change this code over here. First student opens all the lockers, right? So, that, so we might as well just copy this and then just change to say, now it's opened. All the elements are at a one. Now the second student, what do they do now? What they do is they will be closing all the even numbered lockers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have an idea of how to go about this. Let me write this code and get back to you right now. Now, okay, let's write the comment over here. Okay, so what this code does is it's saying this second student will be closing all even numbered lockers, meaning second student will be now studying at the second element, not at zero. Remember, they are only looking at two, four, six, eight, ten. So the first element in an array was zero, but now it's a one. It will be going checking until the last, and then, but now, from the second element, you're not going to the next, but you need to add by saying, skip one, skip a one from the door. Remember, if it's a one, you don't go to two, but you're going to three. If it's a three, you don't go to four, you go to a five. So that's how we keep incrementing to make sure that this student only goes to this even numbered doors. Another way to ensure that you could say, okay, let's say just keep going to all the door, but only change when you meet uh, a door which is all even numbered and this is how you check if something is that way a modulus to say if this number one when you divide it by two it will remain the remainder meaning it will be one three five right i hope it makes sense moving on the third student now changes the condition of the multiples of the third numbered lockers and the fourth student does the same it changes the condition of the fourth numbered lockers and going on we are going to be creating a code for that
Okay. So now, from student three, the student only checks the multiples of the um, numbered. And we are starting from the third element now. Remember that an index is always a number behind because it starts from a zero, right? Okay. So now we're starting from student three. So when you add student three, it means student three, and then we'll be going to student four, student five, and then student six. That's how we keep up with that. But now, how do we ensure that every student goes to their relevant lockers? So if you're student three, it means you need to start at student locker three. If you're student four, you need to start at locker four. Hence, we kept that this count will start at, will be kept by the student number to say this is where you'll start. If you're student five, this count will make sure that this student five only starts with the locker five. And then now, how do we also make sure that this student only checks the relevant lockers suppose you're student six it means you'll start at student locker six and then keep going on until the end of the lockers but now we need to say from student locker six you need to go to 12. so because it knows that you're student six it will be incrementing by that six from that variable student right now if you're student seven it will know that and now you're locker on locker 14 it'll know that it's 14 count but it must add by seven because you're student seven Right, and that's how it keeps checking to make sure that you own the relevant lockers. Okay, now the student is told to check. If your locker that you're going to is open is closed, you must open it. And if it is opened, you must close it. That's it. That's just that. Okay, so we have done just that. So now moving on, what we must do is to display how many lockers. How we'll do that is that we will say we'll keep a variable to keep counting whenever a condition is open, you see? So I have an idea of how to go about this, but let me write it and then I'll explain it once I've written the code down. Right, okay, the game is complete right now. So we will be going from locker zero until the end of the lockers. Okay, we're going to save a number to say this number is zero. That's what it is. But then now, if a locker is one, add on to that to say now it's a plus one. When we come back, the locker is closed, so we don't count it. And then it comes to meet another locker and it sees that, okay, now the locker is opened. Okay, let's add on to that a one. You see, so you see towards the end, we will be having all the number of the lockers that are opened. Look, many is zero. Now, that's the name of our counter. And then when many is zero, if that locker is open, it will now be moving the save to say it's one. Comes back. Many is now one. If that locker is closed, it doesn't add on to it. But then comes back. It only counts adds on if that locker is open. If it's open, it will say, okay, let's add a one. You see, towards the end, we will be having the number of all the lockers that have been opened, right? Right, that's it. Okay, let's just check to see if there are any errors you may encounter. I'm just changing the variable counter to locks because we also have it here when you're opening.
okay now let's enter the number of lockers let's do an easy one i mean if we know that if we have three lockers it means the first one will have opened them all the second one will close the second and now the third one will come to close that third one so it means you only need to have one open locker wow this is great so now let's try out with this following inputs we were given let's try start out with the five thousand okay we see we're getting this number Keep it in mind, let's now try out with this thousand. Okay, we're getting half of this number. Now let's try out with this ten thousand. We are getting the half of the number as well. Let's try out with this number fifteen thousand. Okay, so I don't know if you're seeing this, but if you had seen when we input the thousand, we got half of the numbers. We gave us a five hundred, and when we put in ten thousand, it gave us half of the number, uh, five thousand rands. But when we put in the multiples of a five now, to say five thousand, it gave us half. But then with the one at the end, it gave us uh, two point five hundred thirty one. And now at the end, I just put in fifteen thousand rand, which is also a multiple of five, and it gave us the half. But then with the one at the end, 7,501. So you see, this is the pattern that we're observing. I hope that you can get to see it. It was an interesting and not complex problem. I hope that you did understand. Don't forget, you can also send in your problem question on our email address, gg.ntihalang at gmail.com. I always love hearing from you. Check you and see you guys on the next video.